Hi, this is George Fairbanks. Uh, this is a talk about the three primary software development processes, waterfall, incremental, and iterative, plus one more, which is what actually happens in practice. Uh, I called this uh, the three plus one software process models because as it happens tomorrow, I'm uh, hosting uh, Philippe Cruchen, who wrote the four plus one architecture views. So that's a little bit of fun uh, in reference for those of you who are software lovers. So. Uh, at some point, you probably have seen an image that looks like this, and this is uh, explaining the difference between an incremental process from an iterative process. Uh, the idea behind doing iterative processes is that at every step along the way, you actually have a working system that provides some value. And that's in contrast to uh, you have a design for a large system, but you build it piece by piece. Now, a single wheel of a car or the body of a car doesn't do you any good. And so that's the major distinction that people are drawing here. But let's dig into this a little bit deeper so we can understand the difference between those and, and waterfall in, in more detail. So here, let's take a look at the three of these guys and let's get George off the screen like that. Okay, uh, so a waterfall process uh, is characterized by uh, designing the system at the beginning and working hard to deliver just that thing that you've designed. And we want to contrast that with an incremental process by which you build it part by part until eventually the whole thing is assembled as a car. And then finally, an iterative process by which you build smaller, less feature rich versions of the thing that you're looking for incrementally, or sorry, uh, iteratively in this case. So the thing to notice about waterfall is that only one thing is ever delivered. There's never any refactoring necessary. You don't just have to think about refactoring because you design it once and you build it once, okay? At least so goes the idea behind that. Now, let's contrast that with incremental. Uh, now, you might think there might be some refactoring going on with incremental, but there isn't because in incremental delivery, you actually have to design the whole car uh, before you start building anything. Why? Because those parts won't fit unless you have thought the thing all the way through. Uh, imagine your car needed to have 17 inch wheels, but the first step you built 15 inch wheels or 20 inch wheels, right? So you really need to make sure from the beginning you've got the whole thing planned out. And the only thing you're doing is you're making the construction part uh, incremental. Now let's contrast that with uh, how people describe an iterative process. With an iterative process, refactoring is absolutely critical. Think about this. We've built a skateboard. It's got tiny little wheels on it. There's absolutely no way that those are going to fit on a bicycle or a motorcycle or a car. OK, so we're going to have to refactor things. The reason that this is different than the things that we did before is that when we built that skateboard, we didn't even intend to consider the requirements for a bicycle or a car. We are deliberately going in with only partial knowledge and we're only building a system with that partial knowledge. OK, and there's architectural implications for this, right? If we know we're building a car, we might get our head filled with ideas of what the car needs to do instead of what the skateboard needs to do. So the, the purest form of iterative development has you focusing only on a subset of the requirements that saves time and gets you going fast, but it buys you into a necessary refactoring. Like you can't use those parts you built on day one in step three, four, or five here. Okay, let's reflect on the two primary dimensions that distinguish these kinds of processes. The first is how many deliveries do they have and the second is how much knowledge or what kind of knowledge do you need? In a waterfall process, it's very straightforward. There's only one delivery. I don't think anyone makes a mistake with that. But oftentimes, incremental and iterative are, are conflated. And the reason for that is they both involve uh, many deliveries. Now let's take a look at knowledge. Where waterfall and incremental are both the same is they require a design to be complete before you start building parts, OK? In the, uh, in the waterfall example, you build just one big thing, and in incremental, you stage the uh, delivery of the parts. In contrast, in a big contrast, actually, the iterative process doesn't rely on full knowledge up front. And that means that you can jump in early stages with limited number of requirements and build that skateboard, for example. Uh, and what that does is it gets you started fast, but it buys you into the need to do refactoring because there's no way those parts are going to fit later on. OK, that's how the book tells you it's going to go. Uh, let me tell you what happens in practice, at least as far as what I've been seeing the last 20 years. 
The first thing to notice is there's really no such thing as waterfall because any successful project that's delivered as a waterfall, the very next thing that happens is they've got new requirements, they want to extend the system, they want to do something else. So even projects that start out as waterfall, they get more requirements. And well, now that sounds, it's sort of like iterative, right? Because you said, well, we're going to build this and then we're going to build something bigger, right? More, uh, better, uh, and larger. So that's really just iterative development in slow motion. The second thing that I notice in practice is that a lot of teams do not do the full in-depth refactoring that the book talks about that you need to do uh, with an iterative process. And the reason for that is that they may not have the skills to do it. They may be uh, falling under some simple-minded heuristics, like all they need to do is remove repetition. Uh, or maybe they just run out of time and it's too expensive to do any different. So what I find here is that because they're not refactoring well, they're not refactoring fully, they're leaving traces of the old design throughout the code. So even if in their heads they have a very clear idea of, say, bicycle or motorcycle, what they find when they confront the code is a tangled mess. It doesn't have the conceptual integrity of bicycle because it's part bicycle, part skateboard, part scooter, part motorcycle. It's all sort of a jumble inside the code. The last thing I notice is that architecture decisions seem to be unlike the rest of the refactoring examples that uh, people tend to bring up around uh, iterative processes. That architecture decisions are characterized by things that are fairly expensive to change. It doesn't mean they're always necessarily expensive to change. I mean, that's not a, a defining characteristic of architecture. Just it seems in practice that if you started out with, say, a client server system and you needed to switch away from that, it's going to be fairly expensive to do so, especially if you've built up a lot of code around those architectural assumptions. So the thing is that you often don't realize that you're making architecture decisions when they're upon you. Like you had to do something this week, you started writing some code that seemed plausible, and it isn't until a couple months later that you're like, oh, I guess I just committed myself to that course of action because uh, going in reverse and undoing all that stuff is very difficult. So uh, what I find as a result is that in practice, design ideas accumulate in the code, in the system like layers of sediment. And if you dig down far enough, you probably can find traces of the very earliest now out, outmoded ideas inside the code. So I've been calling this process a sedimentary process because I haven't seen anyone give it a name before, okay? So a sedimentary process is an iterative process at its, at its heart, at least its, its intentions are in the right place. But for whatever reason, it doesn't have the refactoring necessary to actually become an iterative process. That is, the transition from skateboard to scooter to bicycle to motorcycle doesn't fully happen. You still end up with weird mismatched parts from previous generations. The old ideas accumulate in the code. They're never really removed fully, and that's what distinguishes it from an iterative process. Is it common? Absolutely. Let me tell you, uh, I rarely find a team that isn't suffering from this problem. They uh, will tell you that, yes, they are absolutely suffering from it's hard and expensive to fully refactor things and get rid of the debt that exists inside the code. And why do they do this? Well, I can tell you this. Nobody intends, uh, they never say, I'm going to do a sedimentary process and I realize three months from now I'm going to make level-headed uh, but ultimately short-sighted decisions uh, that, that make the car code hard to understand. Nobody decides they're going to do that. And what's more, they never intend to build the monstrosities that they, they do. It's just what ends up happening. But uh, they confront the fact that refactoring, rework, rewriting is hard and expensive, and, and they're going to have a hard time justifying it. I find this to be the process equivalent of the big ball of mud paper. The big ball of mud paper, of course, famous. You should absolutely read it right now. Stop this lecture if you, if you haven't. Uh, the, that paper talked about the forces that push us to uh, designs that, that don't have a clear, coherent, beautiful architecture. I find this is the process equivalent of that, which is there are forces that push us away from doing the cleaner processes that we think we're going to do. Um, I started to do some Photoshopping uh, down here at the bottom to make uh, like uh, bicycles with tiny wheels, only to discover that I, I stink at Photoshop. And uh, so I did find a picture of a car where someone with mad Photoshop skills has managed to take all these different uh, 
uh, glossy brochure pictures of cars that's actually a Ferrari and like shrunk it down so the wheels are preposterous so let's go back and take a look at the three plus one the four processes the waterfall incremental and iterative the big deal about sedimentary development is that even in later generations when the skateboard wheels should should be gone from the code you're still finding them hanging around you would never deliberately build a Ferrari with you know three inch wheels on it but that's what you find yourself running in production so in summary there's three major processes waterfall incremental and iterative and you can distinguish them by paying attention to two dimensions how many deliveries are they uh, scheduling to make and what kind of knowledge and when do they have that knowledge when you can get those straight you can figure out which process you're following in practice however there's a bunch of pressures on you uh, teams may not know how to do refactoring properly uh, they may find doing that refactoring and rewrite to be too expensive and once they've started on an architecture they may find it difficult to switch uh, to another one and what this leads to is a distorted process that nobody really is intending to do which i've been calling a sedimentary process in which old ideas accumulate in the code the conceptual integrity if it does exist in the in the developers minds it sure doesn't exist in the code and over time each iteration gets slower and slower because of the accumulated weight of that uh, distortions in the code